Hi, in this lecture, we're going to speak about slipped capital femoral epiphysis. The objectives of this lecture is we're going to speak about the pathology, the presentation, and the imaging of slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Sometimes we call it as a skiffy. Also, we'd like to speak about the classification of slipped capital femoral epiphysis in the form of stable versus unstable and acute versus chronic. And then we're going to speak about outline of treatment of skiffy. A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric Orthopedic and Sport Medicine. This is actually the second edition of our previous book written by myself, Dr. Naga and Dr. Abdu. Also, uh, you can go back to this lecture. This is one of our earliest lecture on this channel about hip ch pain in children. And uh, in this uh, lecture, we spoke uh, briefly about slipped capital femoral epiphysis and other sources of hip pain. In, this, uh, in the current lecture that we're doing now, we're going to speak about uh, skiffy in more details. So what is slipped capital femoral epiphysis? What does this mean? It means displacement of the proximal metaphysis, proximal femoral metaphysis, in relation to the capital epiphysis. Capital epiphysis means the upper epiphysis. So if we if we think this is the acetabulum, this is the epiphysis here, uh, and this is the metaphysis, the metaphysis displaces in relation to the epiphysis. That's why slipped capital femoral epiphysis is actually misnomer. It's a wrong name. Uh, because the capital femoral epiphysis or the upper femoral epiphysis does not displace. It does not move anywhere. It is located in the acetabulum. What moves actually is the metaphysis in relation to that epiphysis. So this example here will help us understand more what I have just uh, described. So the, if you can see here, is, this is the right side. It's normal. And here is the left side. So you can see here is the capital epiphysis or the proximal epiphysis of the uh, femur. And this is the metaphysis. And this is the normal relation. The, uh, sometimes described like ice cream uh, uh, pool over the cone. Uh, uh, so it is. this is the normal relation. In this here, you can see the disturbed relation. So the epiphysis is here. Uh, it's still, of course, in the acetabulum. But the metaphysis relation to the epiphysis is changed. So look to here. This is the normal side, right side. And here, the metaphysis started to slip in relation to the epiphysis. So you start to having this abnormal relation. And you can see here, this is an illustration of that. So this is the capital epiphysis or the proximal epiphysis. It's contained within the acetabulum which should be here um, so here this here will we will have the acetabulum and then uh, um, the, you can see here the metaphysis and here the metaphysis starts to displace in relation to that epiphysis so this is what's called slipped capital femoral epiphysis uh, what is the instance of this uh, condition uh, it is more common uh, in obese uh, black boys uh, and it's common around the age of 11 year old girl uh, or 13 year old boys. So whenever you have a 13 year old boy coming to you and he's a little bit overweight, think about slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Even if this boy is coming with a knee pain as we're going to see in the next slides. So remember, this is a disease of a 13 year old boy. In most cases, 13 year old overweight boy and it's a little bit more in african-american so what is the etiology why slipped capital femoral epiphysis happens most cases are idiopathic we don't know why it happens uh, there's no obvious etiology that can be found as we said it's usually more common in uh, overweight uh, boys uh, but we don't know why exactly so most cases are idiopathic uh, sometimes you will hear the family telling you that there is a history of trauma, uh, but we're not sure really if this is the cause of the slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Endocrinopathy, some cases uh, of slipped capital femoral epiphysis are related to um, underlying endocrine disorders. The most common one is hypothyroidism. Uh, so uh, you may find um, uh, 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 patients with hypothyroidism or uh, adrenal insufficiency um, uh, or growth hormone um, that will uh, pre uh, have the cases of slipped capital femoral epiphysis. The hypothyroidism is the most common endocrine abnormality associated with skiffy. Also renal dystrophy, uh, sometimes associated with a slipped capital femoral epiphysis, in these cases usually bilateral. So most cases idiopathic, we don't know why. They're more common in boy, overweight. Um, uh, some cases associated with uh, some endocrinopathy, especially hypothyroidism. Renal osteodystrophy can cause bilateral slipped capital femoral epiphysis. 
So let's now talk about the clinical presentation of slip capital femoral epiphysis. One thing that is very important and the kid can present with hip or knee pain. Why is that? Because the pain is referred uh, along the anterior branch of the obturator nerve, which in, um, innervate both the hip and the knee pain. So about 50% actually of the kids will come complaining of knee pain, not hip pain. So uh, very, very, very important. If you get a child that is a 13 year old, uh, um, obese, uh, and he's complaining of hip or knee pain, think about slip capital femoral epiphysis. Um, the other thing is external rotation deformity. As you can see here, this is one of my patient bilateral skiffy. Um, we're putting him on the table for the surgery. You can see the amount of the external rotation here. Um, the affected extremity will uh, be in external rotation during gait. So you, when you ask the uh, child to walk, uh, you will see that he's walking on the ex uh, external rotated on the affected side. And then when you um, flex the hip on the exam, you will find that this hip is going into external rotation position. So clinical presentation, it's a hip or knee pain. Um, uh, don't uh, forget knee pain, very important. 50% of the kids will come with knee pain because the pain is referred along the anterior branch of the obturator nerve uh, and the external rotation deformity because the position of the femur is now externally rotated. One of the very important point is skiffy is to understand the affection of the other hip. So half of the patient of the skiffy, half of the skiffy patient will have bilateral affection. So they will have affection of the other hip, despite that they usually come complaining of one hip pain or one knee pain, they usually have bilateral hip affection. So one third of the patient, they will have bilateral hip affection simultaneously when they first present. So one third of these patients, of, um, of these patients which have bilateral affection, we said half of the skiffy patient has, uh, will have bilateral affection. One third of this half will present actually with bilateral simultaneous affection, meaning that the patient come complaining of one side, but actually when you examine him, he has affection of both sides. This is one example. This patient, 13 year old boy, coming complaining of left-sided hip pain. So obviously the left side has a skiffy. We're going to see the imaging how to detect the skiffy, but this is an obvious skiffy uh, side. However, when you get an X-ray of the other side, you will see that this, that he has also slipped capital femoral epiphysis on the right side. We're going to take the imaging in details in the next slides. Two thirds of the patient with bilateral affection will have affection of the hip in the following one or two years. So it is extremely important that you instruct the family that if they get any uh, uh, contralateral hip or knee pain, they need to come immediately for the orthopedic surgeon for assessment of that pain. So half of the patients of the skiffy will have bilateral affection. One third of this half will be bilateral simultaneous. So even if the patient is complaining of one side, you have to examine the other side to make sure that it's not affected. The other two third will have uh, uh, affection of the other hip in the next one or two years. So you need to instruct the family that with any um, the contralateral hip or knee pain, they need to present to the orthopedic surgeon uh, for assessment. So this picture here will show us what do we mean with external rotation of the, uh, of the hip with flexion. So this child coming with right hip and knee pain, 13 year old male overweight, um, the left side, when you flex the hip here, you can see that the, um, the uh, limb can be in neutral position. However, with hip flexion here, you'll see that the hip is immediately going into external rotation. This sign is called the uh, obligatory external rotation with hip flexion. Why is that? Because of the external position, external rotation position of the extremity that happened due to the displacement of the metaphysis. So uh, hip and knee pain and external rotation gait. And when you flex the hip, you will find that the hip is going in to obligatory external rotation. So this is another example of external rotation. So this patient presents with a left knee pain. If you flex the hip here on the right side, you can obtain neutral position of the extremity. However, the moment you try to flex the hip on the left side, immediately you will find external rotation. You can see here the hip goes into external rotation on the left side with flexion. So compare this. So here we were able to flex the hip and it's not external rotated. Here, the moment you flex, the hip goes into external rotation. And you can see the difference here between the right side here, 
which is going up and the left side which is going severely external rotation here is another example of this patient presenting with uh, right hip pain and you can see obviously here on the right side uh, the patient has much more external rotation compared to the left side so this patient presents a 13 year old boy with right hip pain and you can see the right side is external rotated compared to the left side for slipped capital femoral epiphysis the classification is either stable or unstable so what is this and why is that important? Stable uh, slip capital femoral epiphysis means that the child is able to bear weight on the affected extremity, even if he's doing this with crutches. The stable slip capital femoral epiphysis has very low instance of avascular necrosis. While the unstable uh, slip capital femoral epiphysis means that this child is not able to put any weight on the affected extremity, even with the help of crutches. And this type has a much higher instance of avascular necrosis. Why is that? Because the blood vessels are stretched um, uh, over the displacement, and this may affect the blood vessels, um, uh, giving the blood to the uh, um, epiphysis of the femur. So we have a stable slip capital femoral epiphysis, meaning that the child is able to walk on the affected extremity, even if he's doing this with crutches. This have low instance of avascular necrosis. The unstable slip capital femoral epiphysis means that the child is not able to put weight, even with crutches, he's not, a, he's not able to put any weight. And this type has a high instance of avascular necrosis because of the stretch that happened to the blood vessels by the displacement of the epiphysis. So um, the uh, AVN is uh, around 0% actually for the stable uh, epiphysis versus uh, uh, about uh, half of the cases, 45% in cases of unstable slipped capital femoral epiphysis. So the most important classification for the SCIFI, is it stable, meaning the child is able to put weight, or unstable, meaning the child is not able to put weight on the affected extremity with or without crutches. There is another classification, uh, however, it's not as important as stable versus unstable, which describe acute versus chronic versus acute on chronic. Acute skiffy means that the symptoms has been going on for less than less th uh, three weeks. Chronic skiffy means that the symptom has been going on for more than three weeks. And acute on chronic meaning that this is a, um, a patient had the history of skiffy and symptoms of skiffy for a long time. However, recently uh, in the last few weeks, he has been having more pain than usual. So what will we see in the imaging? What will we see in the x-rays of slip capital femoral epiphysis? As we presented before, you will find abnormal relation between the metaphysis and the epiphysis. So here the epiphysis, it should be on top of the metaphysis here. Of course, you see that metaphysis started to slide in relation to the epiphysis. You can see it here. So it should the metaphysis should be here and it should be here in relation to the epiphysis. You, you, you see the, the uh, sliding here. So uh, uh, it's more obvious usually in the lateral view than in the AP view and in the next slide we're going to uh, show you how you can detect mild cases of slipped femoral epiphysis so the x-rays um, is AP and lateral usually the condition is more obvious in the lateral you can see the, the difference here the metaphysis is sliding in relation to the epiphysis uh, in both the lateral view and in the AP view so this is an AP view of the pelvis, so we can compare both sides and appreciate the difference more. So here you can see the metaphysis, the epiphysis is on top of the metaphysis here. So this is the normal relation here. You can see the obvious disturbance of this normal relation. Here is the metaphysis, it started to slip this way, and the epiphysis is here not overlying the metaphysis. You can see here, metaphysis, epiphysis is overlying the metaphysis. Like this piece of the epiphysis is hugging the metaphysis here. You can see here that the metaphysis, which should be here, started to slide, and there is abnormal relation. Now, after we saw the, the X-ray pictures and the imaging characteristics in obvious cases, let's see how can we detect the skiffy in less severe cases. So we depend on something called Klein's line. Okay, so how do we do this? So this is a patient presented mm, uh, with left-sided knee pain, and with exam, there is obvious limitation of the left side uh, hip internal rotation. So this is a picture here of an AP pelvis. 
and you can see here this is the Klein's line on the right side so if you draw a line along the superior border of the neck it should bisect part of the epiphysis as you can see it here on the right hip let's do the same here on the left side you can see it is basically not bisecting anything on the epiphysis so this is the Klein's line the Klein's line is along the superior border of the neck and you can see here it is bisecting part of the epiphysis on the right side this is the normal here it is abnormal on the left side you can see the line is not bisecting any part of the epiphysis as you can see here so compare this to this and now so here this is the epiphysis as we said this is intersect part of the uh, uh, epiphysis and here it does not bisect any part of the epiphysis so here the difference you can see it different you can see the difference obviously now after we draw the line that this uh, here this part of the epiphysis is intersected by the client's line and here there is no intersection this is the uh, same patient here the um, lateral view or what we call frog lateral so the same thing we draw the client's line along the border of the neck here anterior border of the neck it bisects part on the right side and this is the normal here on the left side it does not bisect anything so you can see the difference between the right side and the left side so the these cases when it's not very obvious the Klein line will help you you draw the Klein line along the superior border in the AP or along the anterior border in the lateral and then in the normal side it should bisect part of the epiphysis in the affected side it will not bisect that it will not um, uh, uh, intersect with the epiphysis this is another example of slip capital femoral epiphysis I'd like to give you multiple examples so you get used uh, to the picture of slip capital femoral epiphysis so here lateral view you can see obviously if you draw a line along the anterior neck it's not even close to the epiphysis so that means that the relation between the epiphysis and metaphysis is displaced um, and here in the AP of the same patient you can see here this this line faint line here is the crescent sign because the epiphysis as you can see here is posterior so when you get an anteroposterior um, uh, x-ray you can see that uh, border here of the epiphysis that's called crescent sign sometimes uh, the only sign that you can see in x-ray is widening of the epiphysis so this is a 13 year old boy uh, with a pan hypopituitarism um, presenting with left knee pain so exam shows limited internal rotation of the left hip and this is the x-ray of the frog lateral frog lateral of the pelvis notice here on the right side the physis and notice here on the left side the only finding that you can uh, find um, difference between the uh, right side here and the left side is on the left side there is widening of the physis compared to the right side so see here the left side the physis and compare this to this side so here the line is very uh, uh, narrow here the line especially in the anterior part you can see the widening here so this widening in this case is the uh, first sign of uh, skiffy in this patient so in these cases to confirm we can get an MRI and the MRI of course show the edema and the widening of the physis on the left side compared to the right side so this is an early stage of slipped capital femoral epiphysis so widening of the epiphysis can be uh, an early sign of slipped capital femoral epiphysis and you know the winding by comparing the affected side to the other side you can see how narrow is the physis here and here especially in the anterior part is wider compared to this side so after we talked about the condition the pathology the x-rays the clinical presentation let's speak about the treatment what is the treatment of this condition the treatment is immediate admission to the hospital this is an urgent condition so uh, send the patient to the hospital send him to the er if you diagnose him with the slip capital femoral epiphysis and get an urgent orthopedic consultation put the patient non-weight bearing on the affected side give him crutches even bed rest if the uh, pain is uh, significant 
and do not delay treatment. Do not delay treatment for slip capital from femoral epiphysis. Why? Because a stable slip capital femoral epiphysis, which we said is a very benign condition, have uh, nearly 0% per percent of avascular necrosis, can in any moment become unstable slip capital femoral epiphysis, which, um, which will result uh, in further displacement and increase in the possibility of getting avascular necrosis. Uh, so this is a case. Uh, this patient uh, had a slip capital femoral epiphysis on the right side. You can see here the Klein's line on the anterior um, uh, neck uh, does not uh, cross part of the epiphysis. Um, compare this to the left side, which you can see the difference here. There is part of the epiphysis um, with the Klein line on the left side. So this patient has a stable uh, uh, the slip capital femoral epiphysis on the right side. He was uh, for a few weeks. Uh, uh, diagnosed with this condition and he was given uh, a surgery date as an elective procedure but during waiting for surgery a patient tripped and got an unstable slip capital femoral epiphysis with an increased displacement you can see the amount of displacement here compared to here here the line line like touching the epiphysis here it's not even close he's now not able to put any weight in severe pain so this becomes an unstable uh, condition now with much more displacement and increased risk of avascular necrosis so do not wait on slit capital femoral epiphysis and treat them as urgent condition non-weight bearing give the patient crutches send him to the er so the treatment of these cases is usually in situ pinning what does this mean means that we put a screw um, in place uh, so that it prevent further progression of the physis. So you can see here, we put this uh, screw um, here across the physis, and you can see here the physis definitely is wider than this side, so that indicates that this is an early stage of a slip capital femoral epiphysis. You can see here the physis is a very narrow line here, it's a little bit wider, and we did the treatment here, as in most cases, in site of fixation, mean that you fix the, the physis uh, with um, uh, the uh, deformity in place or you try to get gentle reduction we don't uh, go for aggressive reduction to avoid a uh, vascular necrosis uh, there is uh, no need to uh, routinely assess this patient for hormonal um, uh, uh, abnormalities uh, unless there is an atypical case like for example you get a patient that's less than 10 year old or patient that are uh, short for uh, a um, stature for age in this case you can consider endocrine uh, studies but uh, the treatment from the orthopedic point of view is in situ fixation by screw so this is the patient that we showed before that has a stable slip capital femoral epiphysis on the right and it became unstable so the treatment is gentle um, closed reduction and um, percutaneous spinning we put a percutaneous screw so this this is um, this is two screws here that grow across the physis to prevent further displacement so we did gentle closed reduction for this patient meaning that we um, uh, did the reduction uh, uh, using manipulation of the leg without having to do an opening we just do a very small opening uh, to introduce the screw uh, over a guide wire uh, so um, we did gentle closed reduction and percutaneous spinning the screws has to go across the physis to prevent displacement of the physis here is another example 13 year old boy with left hip pain after falling so this is the right side this is the left this is the right this is the left you can see here in the right he has a slip capital femoral epiphysis so if you draw Klein's line here it is um, uh, away from the epiphysis however on the left it, uh, the displacement is much more severe and much more obvious so you can see here the displacement of the epiphysis from the metaphysis is much more on the left side compared to the right side but this patient has bilateral slip capital femoral epiphysis so close reduction is obtained using uh, uh, the fracture table so we put the patient on a fracture table and both sides are um, uh, um, uh, attached to the table and then we can uh, obtain for um, um, a fixation in situ or do some gentle uh, close reduction um, as you can see here after we did the gentle close reduction and we applied percutaneous screws which is here so uh, there is this this is a screw here and it has to go across the physis um, um, to prevent displacement and we obtained a gentle close reduction here on the right side and we put two screws also to prevent uh, further displacement uh, and this is the lateral view here you can see here this is the right side the screw here 
goes across the physis and you can see how the x-ray is not clear because all these patients are obese patients and they have plenty of soft tissue so the bone uh, structure is always hazy in these x-rays and here also the same thing here um, we did um, uh, the uh, two screws and both of them go across the physis to prevent any displacement uh, thank you. All my videos are for your education purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision.